Hey, what's up, good people? It's Jay Ray, the co-host of Q Points, and I wanted to come to you because there are two really important ways that you can support our show. One is by subscribing to it wherever you listen to or watch your podcast. Q Points is pretty much everywhere. The other thing that you can do is you can visit us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on Podchaser, and you can leave us a star rating. Please rate us five stars because you know you love Q Points. And on Apple Podcasts and on Podchaser, you can actually leave us a written review. It's not required, but it really does help to spread the word about the show and it helps people to discover it as they're looking for new podcasts to listen to. We're always appreciative of you supporting Q Points. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us so far and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome back, hussies, because we got your number. It's Q Points, and I am Sir Daniel. And listen, I got to listen. I'm Jay Ray, (laughs) y'all. Sometimes, oftentimes known by my government as Johnny Ray Cornegay III. And we are legit talking about a legend this evening. And that's so funny that you started that way, Sir Daniel. Listen, (laughs) I've been waiting for this Dion Ward discussion for a hot second because... The kids want to act like Dion Warwick was not that girl. The doll was <laughs> is that girl. All right. And I am going to the heretofore mentioned Dion Warwick will be heretofore mentioned as the doll tonight. Because <laughs> Dion Warwick l- legit set a standard, a standard for black women in music at mm-hmm. a time when you know, it was, we're talking about a time when they still had to come in through the back door of hotels. Mm-hmm. They still had to come in through the back door of the venues, which they were selling out. Yes. So this was not an easy feat by no means. No. Nope. So that's, we're going to be talking about that and a lot more. Jay Ray, first of all, how you doing, bro? You know what, man? I am, it has been a day. It's been a day today. And for a second yeah. there, I felt overwhelmed by it all. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of, you know, you take a step back, you breathe, and then you kind of get through it. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I've had one of those days where I had to take a step back, breathe, and get through it. But um, I'm happy to be here and happy to see you, and I'm happy to talk about this. How are you doing, man? I am fantastic. I am not a proponent of drugs and drug use. <laughs> However, I have shared publicly that yesterday, yeah, yesterday I had my first colonoscopy as Mm -hmm. a man of a certain age, Mm -hmm. a black man of a certain age. It is very necessary that we have to do these things for our health. And I suggest all my 40 plus um, mutuals that you all schedule yourselves to uh, get your colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was some of the best sleep I've ever had. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just like I, that. we talked about that like listen when i when i got that done and that lady said he's prepped and ready to go all i remember was waking <laughs> up <laughs> like <laughs> literally they're like mr daniel mr daniel you can, you can get up now you can start start pulling yourself together hey, you like yes I'm like, that was it? Okay, shoot, let's go. But and they are serious about you can't do anything else for the day because you are you're still floating for the rest of the day. But I am I'm back down to earth today, ready to talk about everything that's going on with Miss Dion Warwick. Uh we gotta acknowledge what's going on in the world. There's a lot, you know, things are go- happening in the Ukraine right now that's crazy. Um Really, since we were since we were kids, nothing like this has happened since we were kids. Because there was, you know, we we were right around that whole Cold War, the Cold War, yeah, the, the coming down of the 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 Russian Wall, all of that stuff. We were we we were alive to see that, yeah. And and here we are again in a you know witnessing a perilous situation over there. Yeah, this is such a weird time. And it's funny, like right before we got on tonight, uh, was having a separate conversation 
Um, it is so important for us to understand this, that this, even though it's hap- it seems to be happening really far away, it does have impacts on all of us here. I mean, Sir Daniel, we've, of course, lived through... You know, there was the war in the the early 90s. Remember, Peace in the Middle East was on every radio station. Um, Desert Storm. uh, Desert Desert Storm, Storm, Operation Desert Storm. And then, of course, there was the what seemed like the forever war uh, during the George W. Bush and and the Barack Obama years. And um, these things have long lasting implications for our communities, our folks and the world itself. So. Yeah, uh, just pray for the folks um, over there, both the folks in Russia and the folks in uh, the Ukraine and those surrounding areas. Because here's the thing that I was reminded of this evening by a brother out of Detroit is there are leaders that make these decisions around these things. But the citizens and the people that live in those places are are the ones that have to live through this yeah and we have to hold up our brothers and sisters over there because this is a lot um that's happening and so yeah uh thank you sir daniel for making sure that we acknowledge what's happening in the world and y'all stay up on this do not ignore it it's a real thing that's happening right now absolutely so from one soapbox to another um you guys, y'all are not taking this voting thing seriously. And right now we're talking about voting for a lot of the people that are on um, the 2022 list for the um, induction of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And Jerry, I don't have any beef with anybody that's on that list. I love mm-hmm. me some Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. I love some. I love running up the hill with Kate Bush. Yeah. You, you Rhythmics, all mm-hmm. those people. Love them. Mm-hmm. But... You are not, you are not on Tina Knowles internet going to have Dion Warwick, Dion the doll Warwick on the bottom? How dare y'all? How dare y'all? How dare you? (laughs) Tell, listen, listen, your ancestors don't want this for you. Your ancestors Mm -hmm. don't want this for you. They did not do all that they did and give us all that they gave so that you Mm -hmm. could sit back and not click the link that's in the chat box right now or in the description if you're listening or watching later to go and vote. You got until the end of April to go and vote. And I need you to vote, of course, for Miss Dion. I need you to vote for Fela Kuti. I need you to vote for Tribe Called Quest. And I need you to vote for Lionel Richie and pick whoever else. You gonna vote for it. it's fine, but those four people who we're talking about over the next four weeks. So, Sir Daniel, sir, we are having four weeks of content mm-hmm. just about the the black artists that have been nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, and they have a fan vote, right? And right. Uh, that gets incorporated, like as they're thinking about who gets in and who gets inducted and all of that stuff. So we're going to be doing this over the four weeks. So we're going to talk about all of these artists, and y'all need to go vote, yo. Stop playing. I mean, you can't call yourself, and I'm going to call y'all out, you can't call yourself a fan of an enjoyer of Q points. You can't call yourself a lover of black music. If we sit back and allow <laughs> allow our artists to languish like this, it's just not right. It really <laughs> it's just isn't not right. right. It's I, not right. I, I feel like I'm like Issa right now. I'm voting for everybody black. Click, 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 click. I'm voting for everybody black. No, but seriously, and tonight we're starting off this this campaign. We are campaigning for um, all four of those groups and artists um, that we made a distinction of this evening. And we're starting with Dionne Warwick. Like I said at the top, Dionne Warwick um, came along at a time when, you know, it was still barely a few years out of Jim Crow. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about she is, you know, the the next step above like a Dorothy Dandridge. Mm-hmm. And the Ellas and those women that had to, we saw what happened to them. You saw they got arrested for playing, for singing in um, in mixed crowds. They got arrested for that. They got arrested for try- dipping their toes in pools at white 
uh, hotels and things of that nature. So really, to be an entertainer is a, at that time was a revolutionary thing. And you were putting your life on the line. I, you know, I, w- I would bet dollars to donuts that Dionne Warwick received death threats. And many of those artists, I'm sure they received death threats back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would not be surprised. Uh, during the era when Dion was starting, one, okay, so let's think about the years, right? So mm-hmm. really her career kind of begins in 1955. I think that's when they kind of peg it. But really her big year was like 1962. 1962, mm. right? Where you still didn't have... You know, there was very few black folks that were on TV. It was not like a regular thing. And you have this black woman singing these pop standards produced and arranged by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. And uh, there's this interesting history note I want to make here, Sir Daniel, because I found this fascinating. I didn't know this, but as I was prepping for the show. Let's do it. So when Don't Make Me Over came out, which apparently... (laughs) I ain't noticed this on the Wikipedia. I don't know. Somebody could fact check this because, you know, Wikipedia, sometimes it'd be, you know, whatever. A little sus. Yeah. It'd be a little sus. But um, apparently she snapped at Bert and Hal and said, don't make me over. And they basically created a song, which gives, <laughs> tells you all you need to know about Dionne Warwick. She was like, don't, don't do me. Don't, don't make- try Listen, hussies, don't make me over. I got y'all numbers. <laughs> I got y'all numbers. I got y'all numbers. Um, after that song came out and became a hit, she made her way to Paris. She was like, listen, you can go over to Paris and perform. And she, and apparently the critics in Paris, called her Paris's Black Pearl. Isn't that crazy? Like, and not to, you know, not the, you know, the fetishization of blackness part that was like most striking to me what was most striking is what was it like for this young black girl right Mm. from jersey to decide that this was going to be her life and literally go travel across the world right to perform in front of these crowds and what that must have been like for her i can't imagine i mean those are things that dreams are made of Mm-hmm. surely and um to this day to think that she has uh, had a career spanning several decades is something to behold mm-hmm. there's still there's people that came out after her that aren't around anymore mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and that's to be respected that's to be admired um i like you know she's in her upper years and she doesn't feel forced to do anything, you know, she doesn't feel forced to make new music. And you know how I feel about that. We've discussed things like that on the shows before. If, if certain artists don't feel like they ever have to make another record again, and they, they had a career like that, Mm -hmm. I'm with it. You earn your rest. You can sit back and let people pay you to sing all them song, them same five songs over and over again. I'm with Mm -hmm. it. Sing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, to, to our to 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 our to the people our contemporaries stop playing the doll like she did not <laughs> make these things happen like Dion had a whole soundtrack to one of the most at the time very controversial movies and uh and a classic to this day I'm talking about the, the valley of the dolls mm-hmm. and that's partly why I'm referring to her as the doll but valley <laughs> of the dolls Starring Patty Duke, if I'm not mistaken. Patty Duke Patty was Duke definitely has, one of the stars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And um, if you haven't seen that movie, do yourselves a favor and and check it out. Brace yourself. There's some language in there that you will be surprised. Well, why weren't they canceled? They didn't cancel people back then. <laughs> just so just just go with it. It's still a good movie. But um, yeah, she. I mean, for her to have that kind of influence and carry a soundtrack on her back, I can't think of too many artists that started doing that until you had like Diana, mm-hmm. Aretha, you know, they carry soundtracks on by themselves. Those yep. things happen after the, after Dion. If you Absolutely. Think about it. She broke down a lot of barriers. So I, um, of course, if we want to just talk about like numbers, right. Um, she is considered one of the most charted vocalists of all time. 
she's had 56 songs in the Hot 100 between 1962 and 1998. 56 songs in a 40 plus year. No, that's 36 years. 56 songs in the Hot 100. 12 of those were top 10s. She had 80 singles overall. Um, She is... In that nuts number, she is she ranks number seventy four of Billboard's Hot One Hundred's Greatest Artists of All Time. That's so nuts. she's a goat. She's, she's a, a goat. goat. She's a goat. And stop. And Sir Daniel, you are absolutely right. We have to give the woman her props um, because it's well deserved. Can we talk about some joints? Because we asked, we we got on our social media. Yes. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were just talking mm-hmm. about Dion Warwick because that's what we do at Q Points. And we asked, what are some of your favorite Dion Warwick songs? So here's a couple. So Bruce mm-hmm. Phillips, who was just on the show, shout out to, to Bruce Phillips. BP. Walk on by and say a little prayer mm-hmm. uh, were his choices. Solid, uh, solid. You know, uh, Conquering Lion. Um, said, uh, I say a little prayer as well. So another one for I say a little prayer. Um, Kipper Jones is Alfie, period. Like, point blank, period, Alfie. What's it all about? No, let me stop before they, let me stop before they mute us. (laughs) Oh, because you, I know, because those, so then they're going to be like, oh my God, the vocals, no, that's, he's singing like the record. (laughs) Yeah, right. The algorithm said, oh, no, got to pay for that. (laughs) <laughs> and um beats and tees selected deja vu um so classic classic joints so sir daniel what are your picks for your favorite dion joints so you know i already said um i'll never love this way again mm-hmm. i'll never uh-huh. uh, see there i go singing again <laughs> but yeah um i love that song of uh, a friend of mine um, one of my closest friends actually sang it at a wedding mm-hmm. and had people in tears because that's a really it's a really great song. Um, and I love I love everything that everyone has mentioned so far. Did anybody bring up the solid gold theme song? <laughs> because no! if we because that's one of my favorites too, but I digress. But yes, <laughs> definitely um I'll never love this way again is one of my favorites. What what's your pick? My pick uh, is uh, You're Gonna Need Me, which is such a classic Johnny pick. So, of course, Dion had to go in her funk bag for a minute. So, in the early 1970s. So, Dion, of course, all the songs that people have picked, for the most part, have been part of her pop repertoire, right? Mm -hmm. So, Dion, um, along with Bert and Hal, created these incredible pop songs that even if they had been done before they kind of became Dion's song. Yeah. Um, so that's through the 1960s, right? And then you still get that in the 70s, but there was a moment from the Just Being Myself album where Dion is like on the cover at a beach, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, the the opening track is You're Gonna Need Me, which um, ended up being sampled by the amazing Jay Dilla. Um, just a classic, classic track. It's dope. Vocally sick, beat sick, all of that. Jay Dilla, Usher. Yep. That's the one there. Usher, uh, Fabulous. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, I mean, that song was sampled a lot. And then, you know, fast forward, well, a few years back, um, another one of her songs, well, it was sample of a sample, which is Dionne Ward's <laughs> voice, is... um. The, the 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 Beyonce and Jay Z um, shining, yep, you know, which yep. is a sample of Osolande, which is a sample yes. of Dion Warwick. Yeah, know? yeah, Osolande's Dion. So if y'all haven't mm-hmm. heard that joint, go drop it. Um, so, oh, okay. So, Sir Daniel, um, Dion Warwick for I think for us, I think you would agree with me when I say this is that she's kind of one of those omnipresent figures in our world. Absolutely. You mentioned Solid Gold. Can we talk about 80s Dion? <sighs> Let me get comfortable for this one. 
So by this time, you know, we're kids, but Dion Warwick, you know, we still we didn't know what she had done before, but we know Dion Warwick because of solid goal. Mm-hmm. Like every Saturday night, without fail, the doll was decked out. In the finest, I don't know, she was wearing um, Bob Mackie, whatever the, the finest designers were, she was always dolled up. And introducing, Solid Gold was one of those great variety mm-hmm. performance shows. And it also it also centered around dance because the Solid Gold dancers were always, always performed to like the hottest song of the week or whatever was high on the charts. And we know, I wish we had something like that today. I mean, well, I don't know if people could really, yeah, they could dance to the to the stuff that's out today, but I don't know. There was something magical about seeing Dion interacting with whoever was performing that week, and then interacting with the dancers because she always she always had a number. Mm-hmm. She would always sing a number during the show as well. So yeah, Dion work is you know she's a te- she's a bona fide television star as well. She went from recording career not to being a television star. So uh, a lot of people at that age, you would think that would be the segue that a lot of people would want to have in their career because, you know, the music is changing. You don't necessarily want to raise your family. You don't necessarily want to be on the road again. Doing a television show is a perfect way to stay in front of people all the time. Mm -hmm. You come to them through the television. You don't have to, Mm -hmm. you know, spread yourself thin across the the states mm-hmm. like did you love did you enjoy i'm sure you enjoyed solid gold as well i i loved solid gold and i'm actually having an epiphany about solid gold as we're having this conversation i promise okay. i didn't realize this but Let's i guess it. solid gold was the equivalent to europe to britain's top of the pops that they had where it was like the, the whatever the top song of the week, cause solid gold was very much in now that I make the correlation. It was very much in that vein, whatever was kind of the hot song, um, yep. solid gold, whatever the hot song of the week was, that artist was probably going to show up on solid gold. They were probably going to lip sync. They were probably <laughs> going to, you know, the solid gold dancers would be doing a thing. Dion mm-hmm. was going to have to do a number. She was probably going to sing some pop song of yep. whatever's out and hot right now, um, <laughs> which is weird. I probably need to go yeah. listen to some of those now. <laughs> yeah. Cause she did renditions of whatever was hot at the time. You're absolutely right. Yep. Um, and I never thought of, I never really thought of that before, but um, I remembered what I remember feeling about that time was that, um, you know, it was so one of those things as a family that you wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a family time. It was an opportunity for people to sit down in front of the TV. And it was interesting. I just had a moment. My mom came in. I'm not sure why, but that was really funny. So I was focused though. Y'all ain't even know I was focused. But anyway, family time uh, was, we could watch solid gold. It was something that you could put the kids in front of. Cause we were like mm-hmm. five or six, watch it and feel like, Ooh, we did something. We got a dance. Yeah. We got a music. We got a Dion. And a Darcel. Don't forget a Darcel. And a Darcel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And solid gold was, was it, and this is a de- slight departure, but Merlin McCool hosted Solid yeah. Gold for a period of time sure too. Sure did. It was Marilyn McCool, uh, Dion Warwick, Rick Dees. Uh, I want to say Arsenio. I want to say Arsenio did Solid Gold for a hot second too. Really? Let me huh. let me do a quick uh, fact. Google. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a fact check real quick. But that would be interesting. Yeah. So Solid Gold. So I wonder if. I would like something like that to exist today. I think it could still exist because you know, the other thing that solid gold did, Sir Daniel, and I didn't think about this as well Mm -hmm. is it was also a bridge because your parents could watch it with you. Yes. It was one of those things that introduced them to what was kind of on the charts. And it also acted as a way for them to get connected to the new music as well. That's why I think something like Solid Gold could be dope because there's not really those bridge shows that do a little bit of family and a little bit of pop culture. Absolutely. And it could, 
but that everybody's so segmented, segregated as far as, you know, like you were saying, as far as what they like. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the adults that are like, uh-uh, I don't want to hear none of that, <laughs> what y'all listen to. <laughs> but yeah, Solid Gold did that. And yes, Arsenio did host Solid Gold to, um, up until about 86. He had wow. a stint on Solid Gold. Yes, sir. Yep. He did. He absolutely did. And there was... No, 1980 to 88. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So he that did, is yeah. how Arsenio got his kind of kickoff. Oh, because they did do the different segments. And kind of, so he's probably doing like a comedy thing and like doing a whole bit. Absolutely. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. 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 We are the variety show generation. We, we are. We love to see it all. We love music, <laughs> comedy, sketches, all of that stuff. <laughs> but back to the doll. <laughs> So a lot of what the young people are doing today um, has been done. I mean, we we keep. I don't. I hate to sound like a broken record, but you know this whole influencer thing. You know, mm -hmm. getting you know throwing your hat into other ventures and ven and um, you know or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, diversifying mm -hmm. your portfolio. Dion Work was doing that back then, and if I'm not mistaken. You have a uh, a artifact I do. that you wanted to share with the the world tonight to let you know again that Dionne Warwick is that girl who <laughs> was that girl. So, one of the things I realized since I have been collecting records uh, in the last, I guess, four or five years, I have a lot of Dionne Warwick joints. Because Dionne Warwick classic albums are just great albums. So if you ever have, if you're a music lover and you love vinyl, definitely begin collecting Dionne Warwick albums because there's like gems on every one. But I decided one day to pick up Reservations for Two. This is the Reservations for Two album. Um, let me see. I got to make sure it focuses, baby. So you got you get you get all of Dion. Oh, it's focusing on my face. I'm sorry. There it is. There we go. Reservations for two. So this album. Wait, came what's out. she wearing on the back? I'm sorry. What's she? Oh, wearing here. On the yes, back? give you the back. Yes, get it, get it, ma'am. You see her? Okay, now that middle picture, y'all have been using that as a meme. I'm not gonna say which meme, but y'all have been using that one as a meme. But go listen, ahead. I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> Dion. Um, this record came out in '86. Uh, so this is a year after. That's what friends are for, which we'll talk about mm. in a second. But. As two things I want to do with this album. Sir Daniel, I need to talk about who's on this record. But before I do that, so we talk about influencers and kids having and the kids, they they need to focus on making music and, you know, right. not worry. OK, bam. Dion Warwick in 1986 was selling products and it says <laughs> Dion for everything you are. Hold on. So Dion, baby, you can buy <laughs> Dion products. Look at them. Look at them, kids. You could buy. You could buy it. parfums and <laughs> body sprays and powders. And is there um, a cream? Is there a cream? Is Please there a cream? There's a hand cream. There is a. There's a body lotion. A bo See. There's a body lotion, baby. Dion was giving it. But let me tell you. Let me tell you something. So first of all, she had a business. It was Dion Inc catch it and um the one ounce one ounce of dion warwick perfume sir daniel was uh -huh. 175 dollars in Ooh. 1986 elizabeth taylor who <laughs> right because y'all thought elizabeth taylor was the only one charging those kind of prices dion warwick and Dion Inc. was coming for that throat too in the um, cosmetic aisle at Macy's. Yes. And you I mean and listen, listen, it's got an order form. I could order, I won't, this won't this this won't work today. But I could I, order this. Are you sure? Just for, <laughs> just just for I try to order. Just try to send, send it in it. and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> And I, what did you you would gag if you, if something came back in the mail like a box, <laughs> and that that box would be worth a lot now. I bet you it would. 
Wow. Ooh, I wonder if anybody has, if you have any Dion Inc. stuff, let a brother know. Um, Because, yeah, she had perfumes, body lotions, scented candles, bath jelly. I don't know what that is. It's G-E-L-E-E. I'm not fancy. I don't know what that is. Um, and and a purse spray. So I guess it's a little spray. But in, anyway, fabulous. A brand. The doll had a brand. You see that D? The ink? The doll was doing it back. Listen, we cannot let this national treasure languish on this uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame list. We need to start voting now. All everybody that's watching this, whether you're watching it live or in, you know, in ha in the in the future, go on there and vote before it's too late. Dionne Warwick is a national treasure, and we need to start treating her as such. Absolutely. So let's talk about who on this album real quick, because I yes, think it is important. Now this is peak '80s pop. Dionne Warwick. The whole nine yards. So, so by then, by this time, Dion's voice had changed. It was a lot deeper. It was a lot raspier. And you could really hear it on this record. I actually put this record on before getting on the show. But I'm going to just read who is credited as features. So Dion, we talk about the kids having features and I could carry a whole record without features. We've been doing features for years, y'all. Stop years. doing this. Why? Well, I don't know why we do this. When the kid's been doing features f since music was a thing. So here's who was featured on this record. Jeffrey Osborne, Kenny G, Smokey mm. Robinson, Kashif, Howard Hewitt, and June Pointer. All of them was on a record. J features. The June Pointer. June Pointer was on and a record. Know, and y'all know how I feel about the Pointer Sisters already. Continue. We gotta, do, Continue. we gotta do a Pointer Sisters show because I got a whole Pointer Sisters thing. Okay. Yeah. So... Here's who. So, okay, on this one song, we're just going to go into the liner notes real quick. So the liner notes was still in here. This is rare when you buy a used record, y'all, to have the actual liner notes available to you. Um, and shout out to liner notes. This is why I miss I'm happy that physical product is coming back because now I can yeah. see who like did stuff. But on this record, of course, like I, I mentioned, uh, Kashif, but I was looking at this one track on Close Enough, you have both James Ingram and Phil Perry on background vocals. What? James V. Ingram. And see, a lot of people, like, I know who Phil Perry is. Mm -hmm. I know who Phil Perry is. I know, like, in the video soul era, like, his mm -hmm. videos would be on constantly. Mm -hmm. Those are names that people really need to to, to, to lean into and to, to sing their praises because you know James Ingram definitely and James Ingram wait James Ingram sang didn't he sing a Disney song? he did um uh he did which one did he do um I will have to pull it I'm, I can't remember yeah. right now but he it's definitely did it's not a whole new world because that was Peebo that was um, Peebo um We'll find we while you Google. I'm that, looking. I'm looking. Um, on also on here and another name that we have to spend some time on, but not for this show. Um, somewhere is, out there. Somewhere out there. Yes. Somewhere <laughs> out. There. James Ingram. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not J Ray. <laughs> not J Ray. He also wrote PYT. So if, if PYT is your favorite Michael Jackson song, James Ingram wrote that. So, um, but uh, Kashif. Is another name that uh, Kashif did one to Monster, right? Kashif mm. did uh, two songs on this album, and he was such an important, pivotal figure as well. So the fact that Dion had all of these mega stars, this was executive produced. He was this are Arista years, so Clive Davis uh, executive produced this album, and um, it is telling that an artist because by this point she's only about 20 20 almost 30 years into the career which is a long time a but long time. um she's still doing it still releasing records still has star power and um it's it's nice that we get a chance to celebrate her while she's still here with us because we 
This woman has done it. If you, whatever your it is, she did it in 1985, Sir Daniel. Mm -hmm. When we are four years into HIV being something that people know exists. Yeah. She, She does, that's what friends are for with Elton John and Gladys Knight and Stevie Wonder. And they raise millions of dollars for AIDS research. What? You talking about now that's influence. Mm -hmm. That's using before platform was a platform. Dion Warwick was using her influence on her platform Mm -hmm. and in a very benevolent way, uh, because a lot of people weren't a lot of people were staying away Mm-hmm. from AIDS, from HIV, anything dealing with it until it became popular mm-hmm. to lend your name. And Dion and, and friends mm-hmm. really let, made that happen. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, now it's oh, it's cool. Okay. Yeah, we can. Okay. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to feel stigmatized for, you know, lending our talent to raise awareness about HIV and AIDS. It's, it's not, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And Thanks. Hats off to Dion Warwick again for using her influence, for using her voice to shed light on the situation. And, you know, that song, I mean, I can't tell you how many graduations um, I went to and heard that song being sung. T- talent shows. <laughs> it's just, it, it's a hallmark song that, you know, will never go anywhere. Mm-mm. And that's that's the mark of a good song, period. Agreed. And um, think about the fact that, and this is dope when you think about it, because, yeah, Dion, Dion at that point was about 30 years into her career, right? If we use, like, well, if we use 55 as a marker, 31, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and she could exist in the pop landscape at the same time as like a Janet Jackson's control. Like being able to have those things coexist um, is I think another special thing that we, that I would love for us to figure out how we recapture that because that also allowed for crossover. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Folks that my parents was into, like, might have a may have a hot song out that I'm into. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought up Janet, because I think we want to dub- dive into this pocket really quickly. Um, you mentioned Janet Jackson. We've talked about Diana Ross <clears throat> and we talked about Dionne Warwick and the quality of their voices. Mm-hmm. I think each of them at some point in their career um received some some criticisms you know from the especially from the black community about the heft of their voice or the lack thereof Mm -hmm. and some people would actually try to say that they could not sing which is something that we have dispelled a myth that we have dispelled every single time it comes across this table on cue points about each of these artists and It's just something we were talking about this last night in preparation. Anybody there, you can throw, you can throw a shoe in a crowd and hit a really good singer. Mm -hmm. Great singer, good singers, great singers are everywhere. Mm -hmm. But not everybody can one entertain, and not everybody can. um, What's the word I'm looking for? can decipher a song Mm -hmm. cycle it and bring and present it to a way that everybody loves it and that everybody can receive it not everyone has that talent Mm -hmm. and i think dion was unfairly placed in that category because of the lightness of her voice let's just to be honest the the back the back rack years Baccarat songs don't require a whole bunch of hooping. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just they just did not require a whole bunch of hooping. And you know, and I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with hooping mm-hmm. because there's songs that call for it, but Baccarat songs just didn't call for that. Mm-hmm. 
And so if, and, but it takes a, a different kind of singer to be able to restrain their voice and give the song what it needs to work, you know? And, you know, a, a song translator is what Dion Warwick is. Wow. I like that. I, oh, I like the, a song translator. Um, mm -hmm. Because, yeah, I do think that um, <coughs> Diana Ross fits, particularly in this this instance, Diana Ross fits. I think, you know, I think where Janet kind of carves out a niche is a bit where she's very involved in kind of the songwriting process and is, yeah. you know, in the, in the around the crafting of the song. But I do think, to your point, in the case of like a Dion uh, Warwick being able to interpret these things, right? So... Let's think, let's talk about it. So you have to, in order for her to sing, do you know the way to San Jose? She hmm. probably ain't never been to San Jose, but there's a, <laughs> right. But there's a technical thing that you need to be able to do because guarantee, I'm sure Bert and Hal was like, I need you to sing this exactly like this. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah no differentiating here's the key here's the melody ride it out sing the song in order to be able to do that and maintain your individual in your individuality where people are like no that's that's definitely a Dionne warwick song you have to have something and she had that something that ability to interpret translate those mm -hmm. songs and make them black too right because this is pop songs right this is like do mm -hmm. you know the but baby she gave that little swing to it and you're like dum, 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you know absolutely and so i think when we're talking about influence that deserves recognition these are just we're doing this show specifically for instances like this to sing about the unsung <clears throat> like i you know we're we can, we're not going to skip the um the psychic network years we're not going to skip that because that's all part of the dion warwick folklore mm -hmm. it's all part of it mm -hmm. i think I, you know, I told this to you last night. I think she's hilarious when she's not even trying to be hilarious. She's just one of those. <laughs> she is definitely at that age where you don't know what's going to come out of her mouth. And you're going to have to be okay with it when it does. Because she's just, you know, we just not going to tell tell Miss um, Bedal what to say. She can't be corrected at this, at this point <laughs> in her life. But, um... You know, I, I love that. I love the resurgence that she's receiving because of the internet, because of social media. I, I'm so happy that a new generation is getting to find out who she is. And I hope, I really hope that you all take the time to do some digging, to, to pick up the songs that we've talked about tonight. Look at the videos. Go back and look at those performances. There's a performance of her... It, like she's singing in the middle of a, a, a bar, it looks like, and people are legit standing around her, and she's got to sing the song, remember her lyrics, and and remember that this camera person is in front of her, and she probably has some direction that she needs to. She has to turn this way. You gotta make sure you're, you you know that you're still in the shot. She's got to do all of that while there's a live audience people standing around her and she's singing to this room that's that's a lot that's a lot that is a lot and that needs to be that needs to be studied mm -hmm. i see a lot of people could study could stand you know to to look at some Dion work footage and 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 look at poise look at mm -hmm. projecting your voice and mm -hmm. you know the garments, you know, stand apart, stand out on stage, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. give us something, <laughs> give us something y'all while y'all are out there <laughs> charging these prices, give us something to look at. And Absolutely. Hear and listen to. 
I agree. Like, um, I'm going to drop in the chat. So as folks, uh, as uh, DJ Sir Daniel just said, go out and go out and study. Um, you know, I was so happy uh, to see this. Uh, Malik Kashad on the Black Music Archive broke down Promises, Promises. Just watch, like it's fun to watch because what he's basically arguing is that Promises, Promises is one of the hardest songs ever written and recorded. And Dionne Warwick is the one that was able to do that song. And so he goes through why it's so hard and why why it's so difficult and why people just like, I'm not just not singing that song. So, yeah. but anyway, check that out. And uh, as y'all are digging and Sir Daniel, I think the video that you are referring to, I think she was singing walk on by. Um, I'm going to see if I can find that too, but she it was, it was black and white. She had like a black yes. thing and hit. Mm -hmm. yes. I think that was a yeah. walk on by, but yeah, there's like, and to watch that too, just like all of these white people around her. That part, that part, I know they was like, who is this? <laughs> who let her in? Yeah, all of uh -huh. that was happening at that time. Uh -huh. And I'm sh I am I just know in, in the pit of my stomach that somebody said something out the way or tried to throw something at her or try to put out a cigarette. Or, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff could have happened. Uh -huh. But she was standing there flat-footed and saying, Baby, listen. Okay, so Sir Daniel, we gotta go. We gotta dip in the '90s Dion now. Yeah. We gotta go to '90s Dion, which is different. <laughs> call me now. Call us. Call up a psychic network friend. It's, you know what? It's a thing that happened. It's a phenomenon. If people weren't paying for it then they wouldn't be able to pay like a Dion. I think there's some stigma attached to it because of the types of people that were associated with those kinds of um, tele telephone network things. Because listen, kids, back in the day, we used to have what were called landlines. And the landline, sometimes it would be stuck on the wall or you'd have one, a telephone you know, sitting on the um, on the chest of drawers or wherever else in the house. And, you know, certain people would get lonely and want to get advice from a psychic. And there were telephone lines for everything. There were there were telephone lines for like rap artists would come out and have a telephone line with it. I remember I got in trouble because I, I called like a JJ Fad hotline or something like that once once upon a time. Um of course there were the uh, the, the X rated hotlines. So of course there are psychic hotlines. Why not? People want to know what you know what's in their future, and these hotlines had the money to get people like a Dionne Warwick, um, more infamously Latoya Jackson at one point. You forgot about that? I Latoya. completely forgot about that one. <laughs> Latoya, you know what? I think Latoya deserves a segment. Latoya is. Latoya deserves a segment. Latoya is, <laughs> I can't, she is a, she's a very, anyway, she's just one of those figures in pop culture that is just a marvel, something to marvel at because you're like, wow, that, that happened. happened. That happened. That. Mm -hmm. Hot and potato was is a jam. So that's all I'm going to say. Go listen, listen to Hot you're potato. Gonna, it rocks. You're going to miss my love. That's my joint. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you're gonna miss my love. That's yes. And heart don't lie. Oh, okay. So we got three. We got three Latoya Jackson joints. Okay, so we four, playing. Four, we can four, four. <laughs> four. You're gonna get rocked. Which I don't really like home. your. I don't really like you're gonna get rocked. I'll never forget the video. You're gonna get rocked. No, I don't like that one. But at least the first three, I'm like, oh, those is joints. I like them. So yeah. we should. We maybe we do need to talk about her. <laughs> Listen, and you know, there's some crossover because not only did she do Psyche Networks, but she was on The Apprentice. The same was she on the same season as Dion? Maybe I don't. You know, I never I actually so. watched The Apprentice. I only caught the highlights, and Dion um, and Omarosa were kind of my favorites. So yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, listen, a, a lot of the artists that. Every, people are, you know, calling influencers and, you know, multimedia stars and whatnot. 
Dion did the same thing. She's doing. She did exactly the same thing, and deserves our respect. And if I can have a moment to plug something really quick, um, starting on March sixth. Is it a Saturday? Yes, March fifth. I'm gonna say. March I think 5th, it's the fifth. <laughs> in time for Women's History Month, you know, Sir Daniel is bringing back. Um, my live mix show, and I am dedicating my live mix show again to Black women in music. It's 99.5% all Black women. There might be a, a couple, you know, Ivory, Ivory, um, <laughs> R&B, Ivory Queens and whatnot that may yeah. be thrown in there <laughs> a couple times. But I, these, I'm doing that because I want to pay respects to people like Dion. To people who, <clears throat> first of all, I want to pay respect to like mix shows back in the day. <clears throat> I'm doing it on vinyl. Um, it's going to be live, so it's going to be what it's going to be. But it's going to be a dope set dedicated to Black women in music, and you know that's the reason why the shows like that, Sugar Honey on the Rocks, mm -hmm. and Cue Points are so important because we have to celebrate what they have given to us because sometimes the rest of the world the larger population isn't going to celebrate them like we do mm -hmm. so please join me on <clears throat> saturday march 5th at 2 p.m and uh more details to come we're going to drop links when everything is all set up uh, but yes we doing sound checks and everything so we can make it right for you but back to cue points we we're about to wrap this thing up. J Ray, are we going to drop a link so that people know exactly to where to go so they can vote? Absolutely. So remember, y'all, you must vote for your favorite Rock and Roll Hall of Fame artists. We are doing this series. I'm dropping a link in the chat right now. We are doing this four part series because, of course, Dionne Warwick, who we've talked about tonight. Next week, we're going to be talking about Lionel Richie. After that, we're talking about Fela Kuti. And after that, we're ending with A Tribe Called Quest. Because we want to talk about all of these artists and the contributions that they've made to the music landscape. And they are vast. Um, and so y'all need to go vote. Go ahead and vote. Vote for everybody black. And then one other person, because you can vote for five people. So <laughs> you can vote for five artists. So the four black ones and one more. That's all. <laughs> Do this. Yes. So anyway, you can vote there. for To stay in touch with Q Points, though, um, go ahead and um, make sure that you become a Q Points insider. We are, I know we've been teasing this for a while, but we are really close to changing stuff. We're like, really close to it because one of the things y'all you have to realize is the plan is to grow the show and we can only grow the show and grow us if we um utilize all the things that are available to us so we are getting to that point so you definitely we want to become a q points insider because stuff is going to flip um and you definitely want to uh, subscribe on apple podcast review us on pod chaser and subscribe to us on youtube i want to drop all of those links and one last thing sir daniel i want to shout i want to give us a quick shout out to um this is our 40th show uh, we completely buried the league we are 40 years old well, not we 40 are years forty, old. right? We the big four. We're the big four. Oh, 40 shows, bro. That's real, yo. Like, that's wild. That is, and who knew that we would have so many things to talk about? And there's still so many. Every show, we're like, oh, we should probably do a show about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just got now. We got a Latoya Jackson thing to do. Who knew? Yeah, who knew uh, we were going to do a Latoya Jackson show? <laughs> we didn't know but um there's so much to talk about and i just want to yeah shout out to you um for just partner for just us being here together this is exciting we are 40 shows in and y'all are here either on video or you are listening and yo that's like dope we appreciate it really it. is it really is we can't thank you enough and um yeah, just keep in tune because there's going to be a lot more to come. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this show tonight. Please um, make sure you voted. <laughs> Please you, vote. 
votes for the doll, <laughs> Dion Warwick, along with Fila, um, Lionel, and the Tribe Called Quest. Y'all are gonna y'all gonna be sick of us <laughs> until this until we get this done. And they're gonna look back and say those two, those two Q points guys, they ran that, they used their platform to run those numbers up. We might have to, uh, you know, um, indict them or put them on trial for something. <laughs> they did something. They ran those numbers up. It's called using your platform. It's called being being an influencer. Right. <laughs> right. I want to have but, some uh, perfume. Can we get some Q points perfume? J-Ray, I really want you to send in that order form because I really do believe that there is a warehouse, uh, a receiving warehouse somewhere out there in the valley in California that will receive and fulfill that order for you. And you have to do an unboxing video. You have to do an unboxing video because I know the product in there is going to be pristine. I want you to tell us how it smells. I want you to put the lotion on your hands. And I want you to tell me if you if it makes you feel like Dionne Warwick. I want to hear if your voice goes down a couple octaves after you sprayed the perfume in the air. I want all of that. All of that is very necessary. I you're you're convincing me that I might want to do can we go okay before we before we stop before we stop because we do have to we have to stop one the address is coincidentally in Los Angeles of course on Sunset See? Boulevard but See? check out this picture of Dion baby listen listen the, look at look the back the look back the is back. out baby the and that <laughs> I guarantee you when if and when they do the um the biopic with Tiana Taylor mm -hmm. allegedly that has to be a recreated because mm -hmm. Tiana has can pull that off because again the doll was doing it the way it was supposed to be done and was giving what it was supposed to give. Listen, this has been Q points. <laughs> I'm D Sir Daniel and I'm Jay Ray and Sir Daniel needs to tell y'all to do something, y'all. Listen, what do I always say? In this life you have a choice. You can either pick up the needle or you can let the music play all the way to San Jose. <laughs> this is Q Points. I'm Sir Daniel. That's J Ray. We out. We, we out. out. Peace, Peace y'all. And vote. Vote. I vote. say vote. The league isn't a thing. Go vote it's now. Vote. Bye. <laughs>